Hey everyone, Eric here. And today, I want to share with you some of my tips for taking SketchUp's default style capabilities and pushing them to their limits. So what do I mean like pushing style capabilities to the limits? I think most of us that are familiar with SketchUp have already explored the styles menu. We know that we have control over edges, whether that's thickness or even color. And we know that we have control over some overrides, whether that's monochromatic or color by tag as far as the face style. But there's a few things that actually get interesting when you combine those things. So that's what I want to do. I want to do a little bit of exploration, a little bit of tinkering, and uh, I think the results are going to be fun. So stay with me. Let's do this. Speaking of style, I kind of wanted to start with a stylized model and not get hung up too much on realism for this uh, for this lesson or this demo. So I've got my little fox here that I modeled. I kind of created a little forest scene that I'm in the process of building out. This is just kind of a starting point where I was playing around. And um, you can see it's low poly, and that's perfect because what we want to do stylistically is not focus so much on adding materials in this case. Um, we just kind of want to focus on line and color and shadow and light. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and expand both my shadow and my styles palettes and kind of push them off to the side here, make them bigger if I need to. And I want to start by kind of pointing out a, something really quick. So by default, if you are familiar with how shadows work, you can adjust both the lightness and the darkness. And what happens is, is that when you're looking at something like orange, like this is a single color in my model, it's orange. But you can see that the orange displays differently depending on how much light or shadow, light or dark, I want to play with. So for this demo, I actually want to push my darkness up to 90 and I want to push my lightness down to zero. And what that gives me is it gives me that true color. So you can see that's actually the true color that I've got that I've applied. So I'm actually not working with light in this case. I want to work with just color and just line work. And we're going to come back to shadows here at the end. So don't, uh, I've got a surprise on that one. So even with the shadows turned on, you can see my shadows are on. You see can, they don't show up. And they don't show up because I've slid my lightness slider all the way down. So they're on, but they don't show up. Anyway, so now let's kind of take a look at one of the first options that we have with styles. Um, that's, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to ignore shadows for right now, but we'll come back to this. So under styles, um, I have the default style that most of it, and it's mostly default. And what I mean is, is that um, if you look over here, if you start at the far left, which is edges, most of the default style is set like this. Edges are showing, profiles are showing, and set to a thickness of two, and your color is all the same, and it's set to as dark, basically solid black, as black as black goes. So that's pretty much how, whenever you open a new SketchUp model, even if the background might be a little bit different color, most of the time, that's the setting that we all get. So most people don't change that style, which means that when they post their model or they share it, theirs is going to look a lot like other people's because that's the default style. So what I want to do is do a couple of things. Let's explore what happens when we start to customize, starting with just the edges. I'm going to go ahead and for this, I'm going to turn edges off completely. So what happens when I turn edges off? I get just the profiles. So a profile is kind of like the outer line of the group. So if I turn my edges on, you can see that I've got some 2D trees here. If I turn my hidden geometry on, some of these are 2D face me's, and some of these are sort of 3D. I'm playing around stylistically with the geometry. Um, but so if I turn those hidden lines off and I turn edges off, you can see that all those interior edges that make up the polygons are gone. So even with hidden geometry on, those don't show up. I get just that sort of outer profile, which is kind of cool stylistically. Um, and I'll give you an example why, too, that helps. As you can see, the rings on this tree, this was actually done, if I switch to monochromatic mode, you can see that those edges actually show. Um, and I may want to just use that alternating material between light and dark of the wood grain to create that wood grain. So by turning those edges off and leaving my color on, you can see that I get a nice kind of stylistic color there. So that's one reason kind of why you might want to um, just turn the edges off completely, just depending on what it is, the level of detail that you want to show. Now, for me here, though, I want to look at a couple things. Number one is the profiles. I can push this up. If I'm going with a cartoonish style, I can push the profiles up higher, which might actually help me. 
Now, if you get too much, it starts to get a little blocky. Maybe it starts to get a little messy. So I might kind of try three. That looks okay, a little heavy. You know, the default two isn't too bad. If I go to one, two, if you go to one, if you've ever noticed this, that's basically the same as if you didn't have the profiles on and you had your edges turned on. So that's that profile uh, set to one. You'll notice when I turn profiles on and off, it shows up on round objects, but on these objects, it's no thicker than it normally is because our default edges are set to a thickness of one. So if you do like that sort of outer edge, if I turn my edges off completely and I just want a nice thin profile, I could leave that set to the lowest setting, which is one, same as my edges, or you know, if I'm okay with just something a little more cartoonish, I could push this up. Personally, the thicker the edges are, the darker, the more that that sort of black, uh, I don't want to say bugs me, but it starts to read as like heavy. So one the cool trick here is that under edge color, you can click color here and that highlights and it means that the colors are active. So this is black. I want to kind of show you what happens when we go black, a little bit lighter, and I'm just going to kind of step through. I'm going through my crayons here. I know if you're on Windows or PC, you don't have crayons, but you can do this again with the color wheel if you just wanted to start with like slide it from black and then just kind of pull that edge style. I'm going to go all the way until we get to white and see what that looks like. Maybe that's too thick. So I'll set it back to one and that's an interesting look. You can see the difference between white and black is that white lightens the model and black kind of darkens it or makes it more heavy. So black, white, or gray, light gray, black. Now, personally for me, I like to kind of step it down just a little bit, two or three shades. So it's somewhere in that kind of charcoal gray color. What's nice about that is you get the definition of having those darker edges, but you don't get the, um, you don't get the really heaviness that you would see with black. While we're on edges, I'm gonna stop with the color here because instead of changing it to a single color, that's what happens when the color of the edges is set to all the same. If I change it to by material, what it's gonna do, it's gonna pick up the underlying material that's underneath it. I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit to something like two or even three for this, so you can see this just a little bit better. You can see that those edges are there. If you look closely, those edges are there, but it's pulling the color from the color of the object. So if I change the color of the object, I can change uh, the color of that edge. So the by material is kind of nice because you can see that there's just a little bit of definition, but it's really subtle. And I kind of like that. Now, one way to do that though, is you kind of want to think about, you may need to think about how this is grouped. Like for example, if I have this whole Fox group here and I apply a color to it, and I'm just bear with me here, um, nothing's going to happen because I've got subgroups. So if you, depending on where you want to apply color, you can either pick up the color from the face or you can pick up a color from the group. That's a little bit confusing. I confuse myself when I say that you can actually have two different colors on a single object. But what I mean is, and let's maybe use the rock. That's a better example because it's not made up of multiple pieces, but I've got this rock here. And if I select this, you can see that I've got a color applied to the outside of the face but I've also got a color applied to the face as well. So both the face has a color and the object has a color. So if I change in under in my entity in, info box, if I change the color, something like, again, I'll try that pink, see if that works. You can see that I have now a different color from the color of the rock. And that's because I'm using it by material. So if I set it to all the same, it's gonna be all the same. If I set it to by material, and it's gonna ask me, well, which material? If there's no material applied to the outside, like if I set this back to say the default color, then it's gonna grab, it's gonna just use the default color, which is the same, which is this color, which is the color of my um, default line work. So by applying a color to the outside, if you wanted to say go lighter, you could go lighter and you can have a, just this object have a different color edge than the other objects in your model. In this case, going lighter might be kind of weird. Going pink might be kind of weird. Maybe going, let's try this again. Maybe going just one shade darker. If you see, if you look really close, it's like one shade or maybe even two shades darker than the actual color, the face color of the rock. And again, this depends on your lighting because if you have your lighting 
uh, then the face color is going to um, either show or not show. So right now, that's why I turned the light off because I wanted to deal with just the pure color and not deal with um, with sort of how the color appears with the way the light is hitting it. So I'm going to wrap up here by doing one more thing. I want to close out by kind of doing a, uh, an interesting trick, which is colored shadows. Now, I know that's something that some people have been asking for for a while. I know that's something that maybe um, is in the works. But for now, there is kind of a little bit of a workaround. You can see that my shadows are still there, but they're not showing. But if I change the color on the Styles menu, if I come over here to the background color, I can set a, a background color that is different. Right now, it's set to white, which is why you're not seeing anything. But I can set a background color like, let's say, blue and then make sure that the shadows are showing, which means on ground. So right there, I kind of had them off by default, which maybe I shouldn't have, but they should be on by default, which is on ground. So when I turn my shadows back on, what's happening is that my shadows, you can see if I zoom out, my background color is sort of blue, almost like water, but my I have this plane, this is my ground plane, and it sits, it sort of sits above the background, or just underneath it, maybe just slightly underneath it. So when I zoom in, I have essentially, even though my lightness sliders turned all the way down, I have this ability now to show colored shadows. And what's cool about that is that I can just kind of play around with the hue. So the lighter the color is, the more it might feel like it's picking, it's letting that brown, the sort of light brown of my ground plane come through. Um, and then of course, the darker it is, the more it's going to feel like it's standing out from the background. So finding that sort of right balance as if it's almost like a natural color that you might see um, if you were out in the landscape is kind of cool. Now, there's no shadows actually on the tree or the objects itself. These are just shadows that are on the ground. And that's why I say it's a bit of a trick. And it may or may not work for what you're trying to do. And of course, if you zoom out, your background is going to be colored, which is why I have this ground plane. So if I zoom in, I get sort of an interesting stylistic um, choice. So those are my style choices, and I think there's actually quite a bit more you can do. I'm not going to go into it, but if you wanted to play around with face style, for example, um, and you wanted to play around with now face style and background color, like if I turn that background color to white, you have just really, really a lot of control with how objects are expressed and of course, I didn't even really go into color by tag mode. When we go into color by tag mode, uh, there's quite a bit. Let's see, your color by tag is on. There we go. So really cool stylistic things that we can do, uh, just depending on what you're, um, what you're after, what you're going after, what you're going for. Each of these settings, I think, give you a lot of control on their own. So changing the color of the edges, changing the uh, lightness of the faces, the color of the faces based on the shadow settings. Each of those can be done individually to give you your own personal style. But what's really cool that I'm trying to show here is that when you start combining methods, now all of a sudden I'm playing with background, edge color, edge thickness, lightness. I'm combining these things and I'm getting something not only unique to me, but I think unique to a lot of people who use SketchUp, who haven't seen SketchUp sort of expressed visually this way. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to encourage you to take over and start playing around and let me know how some of these tips or how some of these styles can be used in your work. So as always, post it in the comments below. Give us that thumbs up. Give us that subscribe so you can be notified of all the content that's coming out every single week. And I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say thanks and see you next time.